Hey Tessa, it's been a while since the last time I heard from you. Is everything good? I'm so sorry I didn't have time to text and call you as often as I used to. You know, I'm a famous writer now and I've been swamped with interviews and book signings. Ugh. I hope you didn't take it too personal and forgive my carelessness. Hi Heather. Yes, things are going well, as usual. In fact, nothing much has changed since the last time I moved out of the house, actually. I'm surprised you brought that up. Are you still holding a grudge against me for marrying your ex-husband? It's been years, sis. You should be able to forgive me by now. We're family after all. <laughs> I wish it were that easy. Losing my husband and getting kicked out of my house in one day was a lot to handle. As a matter of fact, I still haven't fully processed everything that happened, and I still feel the pain when I think about it. I know, sis, but how can you save a marriage that was no longer working anymore? George already told you that his feelings for you had faded over time, and I was the only one who had a spot in his heart. Surely he made this clear before you guys got divorced, correct? I know you're still beating yourself up for losing such a well-off man like George, but it's about time you move on and face the reality, Tessa. I never cared about his money. What I cared about was the betrayal. I was deeply hurt when I found out that he cheated on me with you. The sight of you two together in my bedroom was a knife to my heart. I felt betrayed and humiliated. Come on sis, don't act like I'm the one who's at fault here. I mean, your husband was the one who hit on me first. What was I supposed to do? Even if that were the case, you could have easily said no, but instead you chose to betray your own sister. My husband wasn't innocent, but I don't think you were either. In fact, I still blame myself sometimes for ignoring the red flags that kept telling me you were seducing my husband. Honey, I wouldn't call it a betrayal. Didn't you hear what he said before the day you got divorced? He told you that he had lost all of his interest in you a long time ago, but he didn't want to hurt your feelings. Many times he came to me for comfort and advice, and we grew closer and closer just like that. George was unhappy for quite a long time, and he just finally found the courage to leave. Enough. I'm not really feeling up to talking about that at the moment. Can we just change the subject of our conversation? Yeah, sure. So, what have you been doing for a living, Tessa? Still trying to make it as a full-time freelance artist? I already told you a million times, your paintings suck. No one wants to buy them. They're so bad, you could lay them on the floor and people would mistake them for doormats. Don't be so harsh on me, Heather. I know my paintings aren't everyone's cup of tea, but I believe that art should be a reflection of the artist's heart and soul. I could draw something easier for the audience to approach, but that would be a betrayal of my own artistic vision. I'm not going to compromise my art just to make it more marketable. I know that there are people out there who appreciate my work for what it is. Whatever your stupid belief is the reason why you're still living in poverty. For me, money comes first, and it's all about creating things that people will like. Just look at me in my best-selling book, The Power of Marriage. Sold over 200,000 copies and generated more than $1.6 million last year. Can you believe it? Oh, and have you heard about my book, A Match Made in Success? <laughs> It's a memoir about my marriage to George, and it was just published last month. It's already sold a couple of thousand copies, and I'm really excited about it. Yes, I've heard about those books, and you've also written many other famous marriage books. I just thought it's quite ironic that someone who has sabotaged other people's marriages would write about the principles for a strong and lasting relationship. Hey, are you referring to me, Tessa? I can see that you're still struggling to conceal your jealousy of my successful and wealthy life. It must be hard to see someone like me living the good life while you're stuck in your destitute existence. I guess it must be tough raising Gabriella all by herself, huh? At least George still gives you some pity money every month to keep you and Gabriella from the verge of hunger. So, you're finally showing your true colors, huh? Well, let me tell you something. I know exactly how hard I had to sacrifice for you to get where you are today. I gave up my dreams, my relationships, and my sanity, all so that you could achieve yours. Oh, not again. When our father passed away and our mother left us, I was the one who stepped up to take care of you. I worked two or three jobs at a time to make sure that you had everything you needed to succeed in school. I even had to drop out of college myself, but I didn't care. All I wanted was to make sure that you had the best possible chance in life. And what did you do? You repaid my sacrifice by stepping into my marriage with George and destroying it. Oh, for the love of God! Would you please stop giving me that lecture? I'm so sick of hearing it. I don't owe you my entire life for something you did for me 10 years ago. I barely even remember it. I certainly don't appreciate you bringing it up every single time we talk. You sure are ungrateful, aren't you? Anyways... Do you have free time? I just want to invite you to come over to my house and join my birthday party. It'll be fun, but don't bring Gabriella along. She would cry and ruin the party for everyone else. 
Hmm. I don't really want to go because I have a lot of things to do. Ugh, please, your excuses are so lame. What else do you have to do all day besides painting those ridiculous pictures that belong in the trash? Think about the sake of our sisterhood and come to my house, please. It will be great fun. I can guarantee you. Um, okay. I guess it wouldn't harm just to attend your birthday party. We're sisters after all. I'll be there, but I'm not making any promises about how much fun I'll have. That's my sister. So I'll see you at 8 o'clock in the evening at my house, right? Don't forget about it. <laughs> What was your intention of inviting me to your dinner party last night? You treated me like my presence wasn't even important. You called me your housekeeper and made me slave away for you and your guests. What was that all about? I'm not sure if you were trying to be funny or if you were just being mean, but either way, it was really hurtful. Tessa, really, could you think rationally for just a little bit? How can I call you my sister when you're so impoverished? I mean, judging by the way you dressed yesterday, I can only guess those outdated garments were bought at a thrift store or a garage sale. <laughs> It's embarrassing to be seen with you in public. You don't even deserve to be my housekeeper. <laughs> what? How can you say that about your own sister? Are appearance and money truly that important? Um, what else could be more important? I mean, look at how my friends dress and look. They're all from wealthy families, have high social status, or are celebrities. If I claimed you as my sister, they'd laugh at me in my face and then shun me. You wouldn't want that to happen to your own sister, would you? But why didn't you give me a heads up? Instead, you made me a laughing stock in front of your friends. Well, it's not like you would find anything more decent to wear even if I told you about my friends in advance. But thanks for coming anyway. You were very helpful at cleaning after the party. I was so concerned because my current housekeeper asked for a sick leave and I couldn't find anyone better to replace her. So you called me up just so I could do the work for your housekeeper? Well, I'm not surprised by your actions anymore. After all, you've already stolen my husband and belittled my chosen profession. What else couldn't you possibly do to hurt me? One thing I'm a little concerned for you though. Concerned for me? Why would you be concerned for me? I have everything I could ever want. I'm at the top of my career. I own your former house and your wealthy ex-husband and I'm living the best life imaginable. What could possibly be wrong? Well, I'm just interested to see how the audience will react when they find out that your marriage is not as perfect as it seems. Will they be disappointed? Will they be shocked? I can't tell for sure. What do you mean when saying that my marriage isn't perfect? We are both incredibly successful people. I'm a world-renowned writer, and George is a household name who earns over half a million dollars per year. What could possibly go wrong with my marriage? Well, I'm not trying to be nosy, but I found out yesterday that you and George are sleeping in separate rooms. I don't have to be a psychologist to know that sleeping apart can be a sign of troubled marriage, or even a marriage that's on the verge of dying. Am I correct about that? What? How dare you break into my room without my permission? I'm sure you were looking for something to take from my house. What? I may have some financial problems, but I'm certainly not a thief. You were the one who told me to clean the entire house before the guests arrived. Remember? I only did what you asked me to do. Oh yeah, I told you that. But it's understandable that every marriage has its ups and downs. My marriage with George is no exception. We've had a few arguments lately and we're not talking to each other right now. But that doesn't mean our marriage is on the verge of dying like you said. Hmm, the condition of the master bedroom is a clear indication that it hasn't been used in a long time. The air is stale and musty. The floor is covered with a thick layer of dust. And there are cobwebs in the corners. The windows are also smudged with dirt. Just admit it. You and George weren't sleeping together for years. Why do you have to keep pretending that you have a happy marriage? We both know that's not the case. You're not fooling anyone. It's my family business. Don't stick your nose into it. I'm sure your audience will be devastated to learn that the power couple, an impeccable marriage they look up to, is nothing but a complete sham. I I'm sure the press will be thrilled after I reveal to them this hot topic. You! How dare you threaten me like that? No, I mean, Tessa, why should you ever rat out your own sister? Really? I've made a great fortune and achieved fame from selling those books. If anyone ever finds out the truth about my marriage with George, my reputation will be ruined and I'll be ruined with it too. I'm begging you, Tessa. Please don't tell anyone about this. Just a few minutes ago, you were raising your voice at me, calling me your housekeeper, and belittling me for my financial status. What's the reason for your sudden change in your behavior? Well, Tessa, you know I didn't mean what I say. In fact, you already knew that I'm a person who always speaks without thinking about the consequences of my words. Please, Tessa, just forgive me this one time. I'll swear I'll treat you better the next time we meet. You have my word. I don't know, Heather. You've done me wrong over and over again. I don't know if I can still put my trust in you after all of this. I know I messed up and I'm so sorry for what I did. I know that it doesn't make it right, but I hope you can forgive me. You know that you're the only one I can count on. Other than you, I have no one else. Please. 
please, Tessa, spare me this time. Okay, I let you go this time, but I'm warning you. If you do this to me again, I'm done. I can't keep forgiving you for breaking my trust. Thank you, Tessa. I know that you're my dearest sister in the world and you would never do anything to harm me. Tessa, are you there? I have something very important to talk to you about. Yeah, I'm here. What's up? I have something to ask you. It may sound a little strange, but just hear me out, okay? Sure, go ahead. I'll try to help you the best I could. Listen, can you let me borrow your daughter, Gabriella, for some time? The situation is urgent, and you can't say no to me. What? Borrow Gabriella? What do you need my daughter for? In fact, what are you even thinking? I know this is a lot to process all at once, but I had no other choice. Press has been hounding me with questions about my child with George. They've been asking when we're going to have a child, why we haven't had a child after four years of marriage, and even if I'm infertile, I've been bombarded with so many questions, and I finally felt like I had to defend myself. I had to tell them that we already have a child, but we've chosen to keep her out of the public eye. So now you want Gabriella to pretend to be your own child? That's only gonna worsen the situation. You can't cover one lie with more lies. You know that. But what could I do in that circumstance? Tell them that my marriage with George isn't fulfilled and happy as it looks on the surface? If the press found out about it, my life would be a complete disaster. I've worked so hard for my career. I've built everything I have from the ground up. The fame, the money, the spotlight. Everything I own would dissipate in just a blink of an eye. How can I live with that? I don't know, Heather, but this is just too much. Gabriella is my daughter, and I love her more than anything in the world. I just can't hand her over to you like a merch. Ugh, sister, don't make it sound so complicated. I'm just gonna borrow Gabriella for the press release of my upcoming book. After that, I'll let her back into your arms, safe and sound. In fact, after appearing at my press release as my daughter, Gabriella will become famous just like me. With her newfound fame, she'll be able to earn a lot of money and sign contracts with large brands. This will turn you into your daughter's destitute life into something that's worth living. Don't try to bait me with money. You know that I'm not a materialistic person like you. Besides, Gabriella doesn't need the kind of fame that is based on lies. She deserves to be famous for her own merits, not because of someone else's deception. I don't want her to end up like you, living a life that is based on falsehood and manipulation. I know, but at least help me out this time, if you still consider me your sister. Look, if you don't lend me a helping hand this time, my whole career and everything I put effort into will go down the drain. Do you actually have a heart to see everything I've worked for get destroyed right in front of my eyes? Look, if you don't agree to my plan, then I have no reason to exist in this world anymore. What are you saying, Heather? Please don't think about doing anything stupid. You still have a whole life ahead waiting for you. Just divorce George and rebuild your happiness from scratch. You still have plenty of time time? You're still young? Are you crazy? I can't give up the fame, money, and glory that I'm possessing. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. If you don't agree with my plan, it's all over. Ugh, don't break my heart into a million pieces. You know I only have you and Gabrielle as my flesh and blood relatives. So you agree to do as I say. Come on, I'm only borrowing Gabriella for one day. I'll have her back to you before you know it. All I'm gonna do is introduce her to the audience and have her practice answering some questions for the press. I just need her to convince everyone that I'm her mother. I promise I won't do anything to harm her. I just need her help for one day, and then she'll be back with you. Mm -hmm. Okay then, if you insist. That's my sister! I'd like to borrow her for tomorrow morning for my press release. It starts at 9am, so I'll come to your house at 8am to pick her up. You know, this press release is for my new book, The Parenting Journey, a roadmap for raising happy, healthy children. I know the audience will love it, especially when I introduce my own child, who I'll claim to be the source of my inspiration. This is so wrong, Heather. I feel like you're lying to the audience, especially your fans. Honestly, my biggest advice for you at this very moment is to stop before it's too late. I know, I know. Just help me this one time and I'll promise I'll never ask anything from you ever again. Fine, I'll help you this time, but please don't do anything out of line. Heather, where are you and Gabriella? I've been waiting for you the whole day. You said you were gonna return Gabriella to me by 1 p.m. Didn't you receive my innumerable texts and calls? I'm sorry, Tessa, but Gabriella is staying with me. She's such a bright kid, and the audience fell in love with her immediately. Did you know that just today, my new book has sold a couple of thousand copies? It's thanks to Gabriella. Tessa, I think I'm gonna keep her around. Will you let her stay with me? No! She's my daughter! 
How can I let you keep her? Oh, come on, Tessa. Do you honestly think that you're giving her the life she deserves with your scanty income? I, on the other hand, have a solid financial footing that I can guarantee you that I'll take a better care of her than you ever did. I promise Gabriella will be showered with fame and money when she's become my child. There's no way she's gonna agree with your stupid idea. She knows very well that I'm her mom and she will insist on coming back to my arms. Oh, Heather, she's a two-year-old kid. She can't decide for herself. Besides, I'm already at the airport. Me and my husband and Gabriella are heading to another country where you can't find me. Don't worry, I'll send you a couple of pictures of your daughter every now and then. Your child will be a great tool for me to earn even more money. <sighs> I knew you would do something like this. You... you know? What do you know about? Look, I overheard the conversation between you and George. You saw how the audience reacted to Gabriella, and you decided to exploit her for your own gain. You only wanted to use her as a tool to further promote the image of a perfect family that you're crafting. Do any of my words sound wrong to you? What? So you already found out about my plan? Why did you let me carry on with it anyway? Well, I just want the world to know your other side of personality and what's better than catching you red-handed. By the way, me and the paparazzi are after you. We were tailing you all the way from your house to the airport. You're not gonna get away so easily. And what's happening between us is being broadcasted live. Guess you're making a million dollar worth show, just as you always wanted. What? Where are you? Show yourself now. I don't have time to play the game of cat and mouse with you. Well, take a look behind your back and find out. Heather was shocked when she saw me in a crowd of paparazzi chasing after her, demanding answers. Everyone now knew the truth about her so-called happy and successful family. It was all a lie, a carefully crafted facade to make money. In reality, Heather and her husband, George, hadn't spoken to each other in years. She'd found out he'd been cheating on her with another woman, and she had been too humiliated to tell anyone. Now, the truth was out, and Heather was facing the consequences. Her books were being boycotted, her reputation was in ruins, and she was being sentenced to three years in prison for kidnapping. Kidnapping. The prospect of my sister being able to write again seems daunting, and it may take a considerable amount of time. Additionally, I am uncertain if anyone will ever believe what she says again after what happened. Finally, Gabriella got back into my arms again. My precious girl is the angelic light that guided me even during my darkest days. She's my reason for living, and every picture that I paint reflects the immense and inseparable love between us. As my daughter Gabriella became famous, my paintings also gained more recognition. The audience finally understood the deep meaning behind my paintings, which depict the special bond between a mother and child. Eventually, I was able to open my own painting gallery. With the proceeds of the sale of my paintings, which amounted to almost $100,000, I donated half the money to charities that provide financial assistance to single mothers. I hope to uplift their lives in the same way that mine had been uplifted.